what's next with the impacts matter? Because, you know, the EU recently had an unprecedented conference here pointing out that um, some of the issues must be solved and pointing out also a March deadline. I'm not so sure what you understand by a March deadline. And just for clarity, let me explain to you that the issue of March came up because I suggested to the European Union that by the end of March, a director of public prosecutions will be appointed and hopefully a deputy director. So it's never an issue that impacts will be resolved by the end of March. That's, that's very wrong. That's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. can be resolved by the end of March if you're going to appoint a DPP by the end of March who has responsibility to make a determination as to whether there will be any prosecution. So that's the first point. The second point, though, Sarah, which is more important, it's very important that the method of appointing of a DPP is understood. It's not a government that appoints a director of public prosecutions or the deputy director. The director of public prosecutions and the deputy director are appointed by the Governor General acting on the advice of the Judicial Legal Services Commission. The chairperson of the Judicial Legal Services Commission is the Chief Justice. What happens though in the case of the director, before the Judicial Legal Services Commission advises the Governor General to appoint, they're required to consult the Prime Minister. Consulting the Prime Minister doesn't mean that they take the advice of the Prime Minister. It only means that you hear his point of view on the issue of appointment. But the appointment is made by the Governor General on the advice of the Judicial Legal Services Commission. So it's not a matter at the end of the day for the government solution. It is a matter that falls within the exclusive jurisdiction of the Judicial Legal Services Commission. Mm. But based on what they're saying, is there any indication as to whether the DPP would actually be appointed? I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. The proper authority to ask that would be the Registrar of the Supreme Court. Um, not me, because I don't make a decision about the appointment of the Director of Public Prosecutions. As I explained, Sarah, I'm only consulted by the Commission before they tender advice to the Governor General. Okay. Um, this <coughs> whole impacts matter. How mm. serious is this whole issue, especially in light of the possibility that there could be further restrictions by the EU? especially in terms of concerns of passport restrictions. What would you like to say to assure members of the public in that regard? It's the first time I'm hearing that there are suggestion of the possibility of restrictions by the EU. I've never heard that, Sarah. In all my con discussions with the um, ambassadors representing the European Union in the Caribbean, that has never, ever come up. So but are you <laughs> this concerned? Is new, this is news to me. Um, whether that speculation is justified or not, I do not know. What I would say, however, that obviously impacts has to concern us. And I'm here, I think we are using the wrong terminology when we say impacts, because impacts is nothing else than a report of an agency of CARICOM. If the United States has imposed sanctions on St. Lucia because of the application of the Lehi Law, and those sanctions, for example, mean that our police officers, all of them, can't travel to the United States, that we are forbidden to receive um, security support and assistance from the United States, that we um, are not allowed to train our officers under any program that the U.S. funds, we can't get parts for our Marine unit, and obviously it is a serious matter. It has to, it has to concern us. Um, so it is an issue of major importance for the people of St. Lucia. Um, and that is why we have to continue to work very closely with the United States to have the matter resolved. I believe that the European Union is concerned for other reasons. I mean, they've always been concerned about security issues um, in the countries that they work with and cooperate with. And I believe that the European Union is as anxious as we are to have this matter resolved because no one would want the reputation of St. Lucia to be tarnished by those, those events. So yes, we all have to work very closely to have it resolved. But my understanding of the European Union has always been that they will work very closely with the government of St. Lucia to assist the government of St. Lucia as best as they could to have the matter resolved.
Okay, um, in terms of concerns of international relations with the EU mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. US, do you believe this, coming back to the whole impacts report, um, how impactful do you believe this will have on our relations with those countries? Okay, I think I have given you some clues already. I have suggested that as of now, the relationship with the United States on that issue is a difficult, difficult one because the United States has made some demands of the government and people of St. Lucia. They have imposed several sanctions on St. Lucia, sanctions that are affecting the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, and of course also affecting mutual cooperation on security matters, because the Royal St. Lucia Police Force are excluded from certain pro training programs financed and arranged by the United States. So clearly um, it is affecting the government of St. Lucia, it is affecting the the people um, of St. Lucia. Despite this, however, we have to work very closely to find a solution because the United States is a major partner of the government of St. Lucia in, in security matters. And quite recently, I met the new ambassador to the Eastern Caribbean, and I'm very heartened by the position she has taken, which is that she wants to help St. Lucia to resolve those issues. And that's, that's I think, is a very encouraging approach to take. So. We have to do what we can at our end to resolve the issues. Obviously, countries in the European Union would be concerned because any country hearing that extrajudicial killings have taken place in our jurisdiction would be concerned because it's inconsistent with the history, it's inconsistent with their reputation, it's inconsistent with the honor and integrity of St. Lucia. Now, all of this occurred under the former government. But, of course, as a su successor government, we have to deal with it. And we have to deal with... Um, the decision to embark on this operation restore confidence that led to these extrajudicial killings, or so-called extrajudicial killings. That's the burden of office. So we have to deal and clean up the mess that we inherited.